I'm originally from Holland. Um, I came to Canada in December and I've been working for Nature Provincial Park since the beginning of June, so I've been in this park for about uh, two months by now. And you have a degree in environment or education? I studied biology uh -huh. at the University of Wageningen in the Netherlands. Mm -hmm. I took part of my degree in Nürnberg in Sweden and did my master's degree in Svalbard in Norway. Before you came here, did you know about Lake Superior? I knew about the existence of Lake Superior. I knew it was a very big lake somewhere in North America. <laughs> and that's basically about it. Do you, do people in Europe, are they aware of Lake Superior or is this... I'm sure they are aware of the existence. If you tell them the Great Lakes, they'll say, oh yeah, that's somewhere in the US. Or <laughs> something like that. I, mean, I had no idea that it was shared by... The whole Great Lakes system was shared by US and Canada. I had no idea exactly where it was. I had no idea that Niagara Falls was part of it. If there's any concern about the Great Lakes in Europe... No, or I don't think there's any concern or basically any awareness going on um, that maybe the Great Lakes are in any way polluted or anything like that. I don't think mm -hmm. there's... Mm -hmm. I mean, it's the too far away from home story. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, Even though... People were worried before, like, they worry about maybe the glaciers melting in the Alps before they even consider worrying about the Great Lakes sure. far, far away. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What are the largest lakes in your area, freshwater? Whew. Um, the largest lake in Europe? I actually don't think I even know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, except for Baikal in Russia. Yeah. In, in Lagos. And, and you, you said in Europe. Well, Lagos in, is in Europe. So. The biggest lake in Holland. I know that because. Okay, so what's that? Uh, IJsselmeer, <laughs> but it's not really a lake uh -huh. because it's a bit of sea that the Dutch dammed in, like put a dam around and then mm. the salt slowly disappeared because oh. there's an influx of uh, fresh water. Hmm. Oh, did I? I didn't realize that. Hmm. You know, it's pretty interesting. I mean, there are great lakes all over the world, and there are some major, there are not very many really large ones in Europe, except you go, as you go to Eastern Europe and Russia. Yeah. But there are, uh, nevertheless, this lake has 10% of the world's fresh water. So the, the next question is, what is Europe's concern about fresh water and the resources of fresh water? I know of Holland, at least, there's no concerns about that at all, uh -huh. because we have more water than we know what to do with. Fresh water? Uh, fresh water, yeah. Mm. There's um, lots of rain, we've got several major rivers flowing through our tiny little country, mm -hmm. that um, some of them are fairly polluted, um, but we also have an enormous dune system all along the coast, which allows us to pump the river water into the dunes uh -huh. and uh, collect it later on. Huh. And it's all clean, and well, a lot cleaner than it was before. <laughs> and we process that, and uh -huh. it's our drinking water. Really? So most of Holland is actually um, can get drinking water from these major rivers coming in, like uh -huh. the, the Rhine and the Maas and mm -hmm. the Waal. Wow. Well, that's interesting because on a world scale, I mean, you're an exception, just as Canada, North America is an exception. Mm. We went down to the Middle East and asked whether or not they were concerned about fresh water. I suspect they very different. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> there may be parts of Southern Europe, but I think most of the um, Northern and Middle European countries have no concerns. Uh -huh. And the rivers, you know, that you described, they're, where do they originate? Are they originating um, in the mountains? Yes, they originate from the Alps mostly. Uh -huh. um, they flow through several countries, which right. used to be a big problem, but um, with the European Union and everything, uh -huh. all those regulations are straightened out over entire Europe, so uh -huh. this pollution is much better regulated. Mm -hmm. In the olden days, if you go back 30 years ago, those rivers would be heavily, heavily polluted. Mm -hmm. uh, not so much anymore. Mm. And there's all kinds of fish coming back that were mm. long gone. Oh, well, that's good to hear. Um, but still, you know, it's still not like you're... Uh, grab a cup and drink from the river kind of <laughs> kind of no, river. Yeah. Not too um, many rivers like that, although... Or not too lake. many lakes, like Lake Superior, that you can just yeah, drink at. Mm. Exactly. So now that you've been here, and you've spent time, a short time, but nevertheless time on this lake, what do you feel about Lake Superior now? Mm, well, I ha must admit, I haven't heard that much about like the pollution. 
aspect of Lake Superior. I know it, there is, and obviously we've got a big factory here in Riding a Marathon, and I know there's some pollution centers in uh, Terrace Bay. Um, got the, the pulp mill here in, in uh, Marathon. And those obviously cause or caused uh, a lot of pollution. Um, I was told there's some heavy metal issues, mm -hmm. um, but other than that, I'm, I'm not really sure what's, uh, what the deal is here. Okay. What, how, what's your impression of the lake? I mean, as you look out at it and spend time near well, it. Well, to me it looks like a, a sea, mm -hmm. and it always surprised me to see that there's basically all, all the rocks, there's basically very little life, you know, mm. if, if this was a salt water sea, you would expect to see lots more life along yeah. the shoreline, mm -hmm. but it seems quite empty. So you'd have lots of life in a saltwater sea, but you can drink it. Exactly. Here, here you don't have a lot of life, but you can drink it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Although, I must say, um, like the Little Pig River and the little streams coming out at Persons Cove, they're full of life. Yeah. yeah. There's oh. lots of fish in both of them. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And there used to be much more. Uh, before we did a number of things to this lake, before we overfished it, there was a lot mm -hmm. more. And of course, the exotic species thing, that's something I know slightly more about. Mm -hmm. um, the sea lamprey coming in, that was a bit of an issue. Mm -hmm. um, all the salmon species that were released, or accidentally released. <laughs> um, those kind of things. Yeah. Well now, if you go home to Holland, and somebody says, so you were on Lake Superior, what's that like? How do you answer? I would say something like, it's... Once again, it's a huge lake, it looks like a sea, but it's obviously fresh water. Um, there's a strong effect, like the effect that a sea would have on the surrounding landscape. Um, I would talk about how the lake affects winter and summer in this area. Um, I don't think pollution will be the first thing that comes no. to my mind. Mm -hmm. No. No. Do you find it beautiful? Yes, I do. <laughs> Well, we're glad that we've got a chance to meet and visit with you, Joris, and oh. hopefully you'll have a, a continuing good experience here at the park and well, on you your much. future you travels. Pleasant journey as well. All right. <laughs> well, well, thank you. Thank you.